I was a young kid, I watched a match of the original Tiger Mask in MSG, and it blew my mind. I had never seen wrestling like that before. What was his impact on wrestling, and do you have any stories about him? So, Jim, what about the impact of the original <laughs> Tiger Mask of Torosayama? Well, good God, how much time do we have in the rest of the show? Uh, I mean, didn't they, haven't they written books about this at this point? Um, and I said, what's the, what's this young man's name that's that's writing, that's asking the question here? Matt Brown. Matt, don't worry about the MSG match. Go find the stuff from Japan. <laughs> and they've done Tiger Mask compilations, or I'm sure it's on YouTube. Um because I'm, everybody went crazy about the MSG match, but for those guys of us who were lucky enough to already be trading tapes, we had already seen him, and it was like it was it was shorter and it wasn't as spectacular because that was not his job there. He was the visiting attraction. But my God, he it really, if it hadn't been for Tiger Mass and Dynamite Kid and the whole early 80s New Japan junior heavyweight revolution thing, would we have, and for blessing or curse or better or worse... Uh, would we have junior heavyweights and lighter weight guys today? Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but certainly not as, as much of an impact because they, they started it. I mean, uh, th that was their primary draw, even though I'm sure the top guys didn't want to admit it, but by God, Tiger Mask was fucking over. He was, he was over like, uh, you know, it, 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 he wasn't legendary yet because he was brand new, but he was more popular, just more liked than anybody else in the company at that point. Was he, was he not? He was super over, and again, he only had a two-year run as Tiger yeah. Mask, 81 to 83, and then he had that short run with the UWF, the original version of the UWF, where he was, I think, the Tiger, and then he was the Super Tiger, because he couldn't use Tiger Mask, because the rights went to all Japan, but arguably one of the most influential, I mean, not even arguably, one of the most influential wrestlers of all time. Yeah, and, and the thing is, if they wouldn't have had, if they got up to Tiger Mask four or five uh, before, uh, you know, uh, sir, since then, if, if he hadn't gotten that gimmick over that strong, uh, then they wouldn't have continued it with other people. He, he was perfect for it. Uh, the, 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 the fact that they sent him to every country to learn Lucha in Mexico and they sent him to England so he could learn how to work with those guys and come up with all those rivals from Mexico and, and from Eng guys like Rocco from or Rocco from England and etc. Uh, so he could work every style. He could do everything. And he was once of a lifetime athlete. You couldn't just say, we're going to just change everything we've been doing and, and feature the junior heavyweights and then just, you know, put fucking Denny Brown out there, bless him. So, you know, yeah, he was tremendously influential, but you got to watch the whole catalog rather than just the stuff in MSG, because that was when he was a, a special guest star working at about half speed, the real good. And now everybody's going to go and Cornette hates the flippy stuff. No, if you go back and once again, you didn't get a sense of cooperation with Tiger Mask and Dynamite Kid. They actually went about as far as you could go with shit where it, it still somehow looked like a contest because they were so incredible athletically uh, enough to pass it off. And of course, Tiger Mask did that mainly for two years and then has had resurgence where he's done more of a shoot style and dynamite kids been in a wheelchair for 20 fucking years. So there's something to be said for all that also. But when you go and watch that, don't tell me you see the same thing as guys doing cartwheels around the ring around each other and then fucking hop it up and going, ha, it just, it, it's not the same thing. I love that MSG match so much because that really is still a 1970s MSG crowd, even though it's the early 80s. It's still that mix of older guys and younger guys, all different races, all different ethnicities. It's a mixed crowd. It's not just, you know, white people and families. It's a yeah. mixed crowd, and it's an old-school New York crowd. And go watch any matches from that year or any of the previous years, you know, besides the really exciting main events. But watch the average undercard w yeah I'd, I'd rather not thank you yeah. i remember what they they looked like and then into that they dropped tiger mask and dynamite kid who none of those fans knew and you get to watch those fans those older fans <laughs> like, have their minds blown you start hearing the reaction and you start seeing people get up and they're almost like looking around there's one fan i remember in there i get it he's clapping and he's looking around like is everyone else seeing this is everyone <laughs> else seeing what i'm seeing so it's really it's an extraordinary artifact for that reason you have to look at it in the context of the time though it, it, true, true. And, and, uh, yeah, that's uh, once again, we've talked about the, the mind blown that I got when I saw my first MSG card, when, uh, Weasel Dooley got cable over in new Albany 
And here we all go to see Madison Square Garden wrestling for the first time. And at the end of it, we're sitting there with like, Jesus Christ, is every Tuesday night show at the gardens is twice as good as that. What the fuck? We, we couldn't, we did, we weren't smart to the business and the differences of the styles and the territories at that point. That was the first year of VCRs and it, we had, none of us had traveled that far yet to go all the way to New York. And then we realized, wait a minute. Those still pictures in the magazines look great, but maybe it's because they're not moving that fast. <laughs> well, that's what it was. How many people have you heard about that were disappointed when they first saw Bruno based on everything they had been reading in the magazines for a decade? Yeah, it because it, well, and, and, and I mean, I can turn that around and say a lot of people actually didn't understand when they saw Lawler from different territories. What the fuck? Even though the, the evidence was right there, it's a goddamn... It's a massive main event sellout fucking crowd with Lawler and whoever the fuck having this tear down the house. But it was a completely different style of match to the point where people, well, I don't see what the fucking big deal is there. But, you know, you had to be culturally in the territory and educated to the, the, the promotion, which was what was great about it and why – the business was never all down at the same time. It might be down in Kansas City, but it'd be up in Charlotte or down in Dallas, but up in Tampa. Now it's just always down. 